Welcome. So uh, today I have something a little bit more unusual. Well, as you can see, this is a motherboard and this video will just demonstrate how you can insert a socket in uh, RAM correctly. Now this specific motherboard, which is ASRock uh, H881 Pro, uh, BTC, nice, um, uses DDR, I believe it was three, yep, DDR3 RAM. But this video will apply to basically anyone else using any kind of other RAM. So as an example, I have one right here. This one is DDR4. And this video will apply the same way. It doesn't really change it. Now I'll also talk about a couple different uh, different differences between RAMs and, uh, and yeah, let's just get into it. So to get started, uh, right here, this uh, specific motherboard, as you can see, has only two spots for RAM. There are other ones like this one that has four. And when you look at it, as you can see, uh, the sockets right here for the RAM are colored differently. So one is blue, white, blue, white. It's kind of yellowish now, but that's besides the point. But as you can see, they do differ and they do uh, have basically pairs. This will matter if you have a motherboard that has uh, four or more spots for RAM. And the way you insert your RAM at that point, if you're using two sticks, you can, uh, you will need to obviously look in the manual because motherboards do differ which spots they prefer. But the general uh, consensus here is that when having a motherboard with, for instance, four spots for RAM and only using two, you will need to occupy specific spots. I believe in this case it is the blue ones, but I'm just kind of guessing. I haven't checked the uh, manual, and like I said, it varies between the motherboard. But depending on which one you have, uh, you will basically want to suck it in uh, with a space between. So you will only want to occupy, like for instance, the blue ones, or maybe the white ones, or whatever the color or spot for your motherboard is. And this will make uh, make your RAM run more efficiently than if you, for instance, placed it one next to another, like this. So do uh, consult your manual for the motherboard just to make sure that you are using the correct spots. Now, if you have a motherboard like this one right here that does not have uh, four spots, but only two, uh, then this problem is just completely a well non-existent right here. You will obviously put in RAM into both of them or just one. And if you're using one, it doesn't matter. It will be running in single channel anyway. So now let's just grab a RAM and go over the uh, design right here. So as you can see, each RAM will uh, have this little cutout right here. This matters. Each uh, version of RAM, so DDR3 and 4 and 5, have it in different places. So if I place it side by side, as you can see, uh, the cutout does mismatch. And I can flip this stick over. As you can see, it still mismatches. So there is no way that you will ever insert, for instance, DDR4 RAM into a DDR3 uh, board. So you could try with a hammer, but obviously it will not work. Um, so uh, this will obviously give you the confidence that you're using the right one and also give you the uh, confirmation when you're sucking it in that it is in correctly. So um, you obviously won't be able to use the wrong RAM with your motherboard. Even if you try, it will never go in correctly. Now to actually put it in correctly, the way I do it is by starting off from the bottom right here and then uh, clicking in the top. So before you actually suck it in like in here, uh, make sure that you're putting it in uh, the correct way. So cut out, as you can see, it's right here on the, on the RAM. And I guess you can see it right here on the motherboard. So they do match. If I would flip it over, obviously we'll see that they're severely mismatched and I will not be able to click it in place. So going this way, you'll flip over the little flaps right here. Uh, most of the motherboards nowadays only have one side that, uh, that uh, just clicks open. The other one is always closed like this. So that's fine. I believe that's from DDR4 and 5. Uh, I'm not sure if every DDR3 had this the same way. Now, obviously in here, you can see it just kind of falls in. Could be because the both of them are open and also because it's DDR3 and old motherboard. Uh, but for newer ones, it will be a little bit of a tighter fit. So once you have it in place, as you can see, 
let's not suck it in correctly, simply push it down. I'm gonna try to bring a little bit more light just so you can see the little switch right here. So when I push it in, you can see that it clicks in place. There is an audible click. Hopefully the microphone can pick it up. And you wanna do the same thing on the top side. I'm gonna bring it closer to the microphone just so you can hopefully hear it. So. There we go. So hopefully that click was audible. And that's it. It's sucked in correctly. It won't fall out as you can see. It's holding in place. And that's all you need to do. And obviously, if you're using two sticks, repeat the process right here as well. Flip it open, suck it in, and you're done. So with this being said, if you found this very helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.